really the outline of a new book I'm going to come out with uh, next year. You guys are get, kind of getting the first look at it. Um, I wanted to do something different with, uh, keep it very simple. Anybody here ever read uh, Jeffrey Gittimer's book, The Little Red Book yep. of Sales? That is one of the biggest selling sales books out there. And if you look at it, it's very simple. It's cute little cartoons. It's usually one set, one or two sentences with a little yellow posted on the side. And I wanted to do something in that genre because I believe in copying success of other people. So uh, I'm talking to some people about this. And this is kind of a rough draft that I'm, no one's ever seen this before. I kind of made this up before we came here. I wanted to do something a little different because I think some of you have seen my standard presentation on guts. Um, it's a success system of persuasion. I think it can, it can make you rich, confident, happy for the rest of your life by learning how to give good phone. I'm very big on just learning how to speak to people, how to be comfortable, how to get to the bottom line. I am so guilty of, we were talking, someone brought up about what are the things we do wrong or the mistakes we've made. Who was that? Was that me? And um, a lot of the mistakes I made when I first started, I was running around all over the place, like chickens without their heads. Okay. Uh, I, I basically, I was getting in my car, I was driving everywhere. Uh, prospects were manipulating me. Prospects lie sometimes. I don't know if you guys know that. Um, and um, I wasn't working smart. And now I'm really big about getting on the phone, getting on, uh, uh, I use Skype a lot. All of you know who are my students. I, I'm on Skype every day, uh, six to 12 uh, meetings a day, usually 30 minutes at a time. Um, and uh, it, it's about working smart, asking the right questions, getting the information, finding out is this a prospect or, or just someone who is trying to pick your brain for free. Mark brought up about consulting. Um, on that. I, don't, I really want to talk about that uh, probably tomorrow or the next day. Um, but to me, um, it, it's all about having a system of asking the right questions, qualifying people up front, committing, getting commitment, uh, going to the bank much more often, having a lot more fun in this business. No one ever says the word fun in this business. Do you ever hear that word, Joe? Or you? Yeah. I use the word fun. I love this business. I think making a deal and earning, uh, getting a check by the sweat of your own brow is the second best feeling in the world. <laughs> You're looking at me, what is, what's the first? <laughs> S. Joe. No. <laughs> You're laughing a little too hard at that, James. <laughs> um, this is my standard, uh, I'm going to put this in the book too, uh, the guts warning. This is not touchy-feely, hug a tree, you and me, let's, let's make friends, swap spit, or poor and bonding type sales system. My methods are not for everyone. They are honest and direct, but designed to give you results. I'm all about results, going to the bank. You may be uncomfortable in the beginning while learning guts. That is the price you have to pay for freedom, both personal and financial. One student once asked me whether learning my methods will be hard. I told him that if he could stand with his pants falling down around his ankles in the middle of a shopping mall during the holiday season while on a first date, he would do great with guts. <laughs> Let's face it, modern sales is basically the uh, same old repetitious show and tell like we did in kindergarten. How many of us have heard salespeople, they all sound the same, the first five seconds, what do we say to ourselves? Oh God, another salesperson. Don't we know it right away? We get robocalls, which we hang up on. We get uh, uninvited guests all the time. We know they're a salesperson. What's our reaction to that? Oh God. I don't want to talk to this person, they're wasting my time, they want to put their hands on my wallet, they want to take time, they want to take things away from me, including time. Um, you get in front of as many prospects as possible, tell them how wonderful your widget is, show them a slideshow, leave them with your glossy brochure and business card. Nothing is new here, including the results. There is a difference for a few enlightened students who have studied the art and science of persuasion and influence. We have control, we decide how our time is spent, we work smart rather than harder, and we have the income we deserve without the constant frustration and rejection. Anyone here ever feel rejected or tired? Okay, you know, it, 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 it gets worn. You know, there's a lot of turnover in this business. A lot of people come and go. 
We become free when we discover and embrace a better way of doing business. Um, to me, we can talk about, a lot, we'll talk a lot about, I'm sure, lease purchasing and strategies and things like that. You could be the smartest person in this room. I've met people much smarter than me in strategies and finance and all the different aspects of creative real estate. But to me, it, you, if you don't have a handle on persuasion and influence, if you don't know how to speak to people comfortably, ask the right questions, control the environment, you're doomed to fail, no matter how smart you are. It's not a horrible thing for a speaker to say, but I really believe the turning point for me in my career was knowing how to speak to people, and not just giving the boilerplate presentation all day long, and asking for the order, and they'll say, I'll think about it, and I'll talk to this person, and I'll get back to you in probably two weeks. That doesn't make us money. That's not why we got in this business. We have to have a better system of learning how to control this stuff. This is my typical, like, I have this in my old um, presentation. Some of you have seen it. I love it. I think this is a typical real estate sales call. <laughs> seminar and everything and uh, I want to talk to you, I want to ask you a bunch of questions about your property. Anybody here ever call somebody up and they say, oh my god, you're the third person to call me, and uh, right? Yep. And um, how do you feel when you're, you know, they, when they're immediately made a judgment on you, when they've immediately rejected you? How does that feel when you're making phone calls like that? Can we succeed when we're, when we're getting that kind of reaction from people? I don't like it. I don't like rejection. Okay? So we have to have a system, a better way. Why do people fail? Why do only uh, really 1% really make it in this business? Maybe you can, uh, Joe will disagree with that uh, number, but I think a lot of people get into this business and they fail, be, not because they're not motivated, not because they didn't study hard, not because they're not intelligent, that's because they were uncomfortable with sales. Go ahead. Can I just give a quick yeah. informal stat? Yeah. No, I love it. Um, now, granted, I, I haven't, I, I don't have um, hard numbers on this, but this is just my observation. Larry and I have been very active in our local RIA uh, for about five years, and in our opinion, uh, about on any given main meeting, uh, about one third of the people have. Are there for the very first time and they've never done a deal, you know, they're brand new to real estate. They're, they're brand new to real estate investing. Another third have been coming for a year or two or three or four and have never done a deal. But they're buying every seminar that's out there. And then there's a small percentage of people who are actually doing deals. Yeah. It's 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 kind of shocking. People in this room. Yeah, it's shocking. The real estate education business, I think Ron LeGrand said it. I like Ron, by the way. Ron's uh, I think best. he's a very good speaker. <laughs> and, he's very, and he's very straightforward. He yeah. says that the education or the seminar uh, is, is a billion dollar business. Yeah. Uh, and he's right. It really is. And um, there's something. <laughs> but the thing. I've always, and I've gone to a lot of seminars and things like that, and I love information like we all do. I find it stimulating, motivating, networking with people and everything. But uh, the, the thing about it is, are these, why aren't these people going out and doing deals? And it's the question I, um, when I first started in this business, Mark, I, I think you know me the longest back, do we really go back to the late 80s or, or 90s? Early 90s? Yeah, I wasn't talking about sales as much. I was strictly talking lease purchasing. Um, I think there's sodium pentothal in here. Or <laughs> but I was just talking about my favorite strategy, lease purchasing. I love the leverage. I love being able to control properties. It's been a great strategy. I'll talk about that um, in an, uh, another second. But um, what bothered me the most was that I was working with students, I was teaching them this, all the different ways to put together lease purchasing, 
and they, and they weren't doing deals. And that was really bothering me. Uh, why aren't they doing deals? And then I started to, you know, ask them, how many calls you make? Well, I didn't make any calls and everything. And I thought, maybe we need a system so that these people can, are doing, Joe's going to talk a lot about marketing. I talk about, I think we talk more about marketing now than we talk about strategies. Um, because it is, it is, to me, it's 75% sales and marketing, 25% lease purchasing, subject to wholesaling real estate, rehabbing, whatever you want. Uh, it's all good. It's all real estate. You can make money in any specialty in real estate, but can you sell? Do you understand the power of persuasion and influence? How to speak to people so that they trust, they like you, they respect you, they want, they trust you, they want to do business with you. What's the difference between the one percenters and the other 99 that struggle? And that's kind of where I, I evolved, if you will, uh, to where I'm talking more about sales now than lease purchasing. And I still love lease purchasing. So, uh, James, what are the three most important words in three most important words in sales? Put them in on the spot right now. I won't let you see the screen. I got the answer up there. Oh, that's too small. You can. <laughs> Everybody do this. Look at the picture. Let's do, let's do this. Let's do the music from Jeopardy. Okay. Larry, what are the three most important words in sales? Um, I forget. I don't know. No, I, don't know. I don't know. What are the three most? What did you say? Wait a second. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. He said I don't know. Why are those Why are those words important? Why should we, when it's, when someone says a question to you, and they say, um, gee, Mariska, um, how does this, what's option consideration? What's rent credit? Uh, how does this whole thing you're talking about work? So what do you want me to do here? How does that make me feel? Or, or how, do, how do I respond? I don't know. Okay. Oh, yeah. You brought it up. The, the, well, you know, the danger is premature presentation. So, yeah. yeah saying, I don't know. Yeah. Do you suffer from the agony of premature presentation. <laughs> so, sometimes <laughs> so, the best thing you can say to people is, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. And then we go, when you say, I don't know, you move to the next part. You say, gee, that's a good question. You must have asked it for a reason. Could you share that with me? Somebody asked me a question. Why are the roosters in the parking lot? I don't know. It's anything. Claude, why were the cats sleeping under the, the car? There? I don't know, but I was wondering the same thing. It's, my, it's myself. and That's a really good question because they're all over the place. Now, you must have brought that up for a reason. Could you share that with me? Well, there's all these darn chickens everywhere. Yeah. And I wondered where the cats were that were going to keep the chickens under control. And then I saw them sleeping under the car. Is this bothering you? It on bothers me Out of one through ten, what would you say that is? Eight, I have about a nine. A nine to ten. So if we could find a resolution to that problem, since you're the owner of this hotel that met with your budget, is that something you could make a decision on right now to alleviate that problem? If you could solve my problem, I'm all over it. What? I Yes, I would do that. <laughs> Yes. We just, let's go back. We went from, I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> we went from, I don't know. What do we always do in sales? When someone asks us a question. Answer. I don't know. Black mark we, we, Right. All of a sudden, we want to tell them everything we know. We study all this stuff. Okay, salesmen, salespeople don't know when to, I'm guilty of this, by the way. I have a big mouth. I love to talk. We want to sign people okay. for the brochure. The you know what's the hardest thing sometimes? To say to people? You know, I'm, I'm not sure. Sometimes people get mad at me when I say I don't know, by the way. They really do. And they, they say, well, you're supposed to know what I mean. Well, I just didn't know what you meant exactly. Could you help me out a little? Okay. So you say you don't know. You feign a little ignorance. You then go. Too. That's a good question. Now, my students here uh, know that stroking and nurturing are very important. They're essential in persuasion. Let's talk about persuasion. Why does that, 
when, how do we get people, how do we bridge the gap? When we start out with, in sales, when we talk to people about real estate, how far apart are we if we're total strangers? We're this far apart, right? Do you think they trust us? Do you think they, maybe they don't, they don't even like us? What's the difference between someone who makes a lot of money? Do you think it's likability? Do you think it's respect? Do you think it's trust? Stroking, nurturing, and another word that's missing up there, empathy. What are they thinking? What's going on in their mind? How do we, do, is your competition doing anything like this? They sound completely different. Someone asks them a question, and they just go on for five, ten minutes, right? Some, do any of us ever zone out when we talk to a salesperson and they just go on and on and on and on? Okay, we don't have to do that. We could just go right into, say, I don't know. That's a good question, or you must have brought that up for a reason. Could you help me out? Thank you for asking that. We nurture, stroke them, and then we redirect the conversation. Who should be talking more? Oh, um, the prospect. No, but the salesman knows everything. The salesperson's supposed to do it. I mean, everybody's here gone into a car dealership, right? <laughs> right? You know, why should the prospect be talking? Why should the why should the uh, prospect be talking more than the salesperson? Well, they're going to tell you exactly what what needs to be done to get the deal done. Yeah, wouldn't it be? We have a rule. It's called the seventy five twenty five rule. And guys, if you has everybody here read my book or both books? If not, I'll send it to you today. Just let me know. Um, uh, actually, I have three books on sales. Um, the mentor teaches the gut sales methods. My novel, because I like novels. Uh, then there's the other book, How to Sell with Guts, and then I have a 2014 update. Uh, and I can get that to anybody who wants it. But um, how do we get the prospect to get emotionally involved so they're talking more than we are? And we can, then we can ask all these great questions and have a lot of fun. Let them do all the work. There's a rule. If you're feeling stressed in the sales process, you're doing something wrong. 